Hi there, this is Kira. In this video, I'd like to share with you my minimalist iPhone setup after upgrading to iOS 14. I will show you some apps that I use daily and how I organize it on my home screen. There are two new features in iOS 14 that are very popular right now and I also want to talk about it, the widgets and changing the icon through the shortcuts. I hope that this video would be useful in some way, especially to those who pursue minimalism. About the wallpaper, I got it from the Pinterest and the link is in the description below. First, let me talk about the widget. Beside from the default one, you can create your own widget with third party app called Widgetsmith. There are three types of widgets based on the size, small, medium and large. So to create your own widget, choose add widget. Then you can choose the style that you prefer. Let's say I choose the day and date. Then you can change the font, the background color. If you choose the cream color or white color, then you might have to change the tint color to black. To bring the widget that you have just created to the home screen, go to the widget page, find the widget smith. Since I created the small side widget, I bring out the small one to the home screen. Then you navigate to the page that you want to place, hold it for one second, and then choose the widget. Next, I want to talk about changing the icon by shortcuts. Well, people are getting crazy about this feature, so I also tried it. What you need to do is pressing the plus button in the upper right corner, add action, choose scripting. For this one, you choose open app. Then you choose the app that you want to create a shortcut with new different icon. Let's say I choose YouTube. Then you tap the three dots, add to home screen, and you can change the shortcut's name as well as the icon. I just chose a random picture in my gallery though. Let's see how it looks like on the home screen. Well, not bad, isn't it? However, I found this is quite inconvenient that other videos did not mention about is that whenever you open the app through the new shortcut, it must open the app shortcut first, then to the main app. So I tried to create another shortcut to see if it has the same problem. And yes, it had. Although the delay is very small, but for me, it is still inconvenient, so I decided not to use this feature. From now, let me show you my home screen, starting with the widget page, the default weather widget on the left, and the Google search widget on the right. In the middle, there's a to-do list making widget from an app called Todoist. But also, there's one more widget under this, which checks my daily habit. It is called Tangerine, and I will introduce this app later on. Finally, the bottom one is the screen time tracking widget. In the home screen first page, there are some default apps such as Apple Calendar, Safari, Photos or Camera. I have two folders here, one is Google, and another is Apple with Apple logo. I still prefer Google ecosystem because I have used Android for 8 years before switching to iPhone. By the way, here's how I manage my time through the Google Calendar. Going to the four icons below, all of them are green color, and I have phone, message, then Spotify. Recently, I'm listening to J-Pops a lot, sometimes K-Pop, and sometimes listening to the news from the podcast inside Spotify. The bottom right one is my most favorite app called Forest. It is a timekeeping app which helps you focus on a particular task. You plant the tree, you start the task. If you exist the app, the tree dies. Forest had just upgraded new version with cool feature such as saving the favorite planning settings. So I plan the different trees for each task and work, for example studying, reading or writing. There is a feature that I really love in Forest, is that it will save the planting data and turn into a detailed statistic graph where you can actually know how much time did you focus today, this week or even a year. This app, along with Google Calendar, are supporting me in terms of time managing and task focusing. Going to the second page, I call this page a mindfulness place on iPhone 
because it has all four mindfulness apps and also a widget with the meaningful quote, stay focused, be present. Tangerin is like a daily self-care app that combines both habit tracking and mood tracking. I have been tracking my mini habits for a while with Way of Life, but now I'm switching to this app. I really like the mood tracking feature. It helps me realize how I'm feeling throughout a day and which factors affect my mood. Let's assume today I feel good. Then Tangerine will ask, why do you feel good? I feel good because I just finished my final report. It's just an example though. And you can also choose some emoji that describe your day. In the journal tab, it has gratitude journal, calm anxiety journal, release worry journal, and more. I have been writing a gratitude journal in a diary app, but now I can use the gratitude journal in Tangerine, which is very convenient. Here is the journal app called Simple Diary, and I use this to reflect my day before going to bed. As I said earlier, before using Tangerine, I used this app to write gratitude journal in English, besides from daily journal in Japanese. By the way, I used built-in voice recognition system to write down what I thought to the app, and it is way more convenient than just hand typing. The third app here is Minimalist, with the capital letter at L. It is a to-do list making app, but since I have to-do list as a main, I use this app as an idea note. When I was focusing on a particular task, suddenly I came up with an idea about other thing that is not related to that task. And it would be quite annoying if I don't write it down right away. So I tend to use this app to write those things and will reflect on it when I have time. The last one on the upper right is Tide, a meditation app, but it also has focus time function, sleep time tracking besides from meditation sessions. When I started practicing meditation two years ago, this app helped me a lot in some basic practices such as breathing technique, body scan technique, and it is still useful right now. To the third page, which is also the last page, since I was 14 has the new app library which features math organization, so I only took out some apps that I use often and organize it by color. I learned this tip from Marie Kondo and whenever I see this page, it does spark joy. To the white folder, the first app is Todoist that I mentioned several times earlier in this video. Todoist has a smart feature that it will recognize the date and time that you typed in, just like a hashtags function. And I can also make a weekly to-do list in advance, not just only for today or the next day. The next one is Notion, the all-in-one note-taking app that helps me organize my life, which includes study, works, personal project, and so on. I started using Notion since this March and to be honest, at first it took me a while to figure out how to use it. Until now, I'm still exploring and learning many features of Notion so that I could utilize this app to help myself be more organized and be more productive. You can search on YouTube how to use Notion and you might find lots of good videos with title including Organizing my life with Notion. Kira is a Safari shortcut that opened directly to my blog website. This helped me access my blog faster so that I can copy the link and share to the Instagram story right away. Then I have VSCO which is photo editing app, workout timer for exercising, and Unsplash, a great source for high quality wallpapers. You can find a lot of minimal and simple style wallpapers which can be used for your PC desktop or for your home screen wallpaper. It is free and easy to access, so I no longer search wallpaper on Google Image. By the way, back to the app VSCO, I tend to edit my photo in a simple way, 
What I do is just increase brightness and apply one of my favorite filters, such as Fujifilm filters, Hyperbeast, or analog filters. Go to the Sun folder, which contain yellow and red color. The first two apps, Lingodia and Memrise, are the language learning apps. Currently, I'm using these two to learn Korean. And if you want to know how I use these two apps in my Korean study routine, please find a video with the title How I Self-Study Korean in the description below. Delish Kitchen is a Japanese cooking app which shares a lot of great and also simple recipes for cooking Japanese meal. However, you have to change your app store to Japan in order to find and download this app. In the second line, I have Pinterest, a great app for finding lifestyle ideas, JDict is a Japanese Vietnamese dictionary, and Merriam Webster dictionary. To the tree folder, Nevedict is a Korean dictionary, and it also features some great lessons for learning Korean conversation. PEL here stands for Premier League, and it is an official app that updates scores and information in Football League. By the way, I am a Liverpool fan. Then I have Fitly, an app that collects articles from some websites or blogs that I usually read, so that I don't need to access to each website and looking for new articles. Waka is a Vietnamese ebook app because Amazon Kindle doesn't sell Vietnamese ebook. And lastly, Blinkist is a book summary app which helped me grab the content of some books that I want to read within only 15 minutes. It has a function called Play Blinks, which means there will be a narrative and you can listen to the book summary when you feel you don't want to read. Finally, in the water folder, I have Facebook Messenger, Zalo, which is the Vietnamese messenger, then WordPress is an app that manages my blog website. I can check some comments or looking at the insights just like YouTube Studio for YouTube. I use Kindle to read Japanese book. Currently, I'm subscribing to the Kindle Unlimited plan so I can read as many books as I want. Canva Stories is an app that offers a lot of great templates and collage for making Instagram stories look much better. And it is totally free with no in-app purchases at the moment, which means that you can use any templates inside this app. I also have Lightroom besides from VSCO because sometimes I want to edit photo with my own preference without relying on filters. So that was all about my home screen pages. The last page is app library which includes both apps that I place on the home screen as well as those are not. I don't have Facebook app on my phone, I don't place Instagram and YouTube on home screen so that I can be more intentional with these apps and don't fall into the trap of surfing mindlessly. Although iOS 14 is a major upgrade that is considered to be revolutional, however, as a digital minimalist, I try to keep my phone simple and minimal, also spark joy, and most importantly, consider this as a great tool for improving my life, not a tool that control my life.